Hey, welcome back. You're here today because you want to know why I don't mount tuners on my F open barrels. Well, as you can see beside me, it's not that I have never used tuners. I just no longer put tuners on barrels. And today I'm going to explain to you why I do that. Now, I have three different tuners here. I have an original Eric Cortina tuner that's currently on the rifle so that I can do a little bit of work with it to show you. I have an Ezel tuner or Ezel. Mike, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. That's the PDT tuner that has some tungsten powder in it that bounces around like a dead blow hammer and helps damp vibrations. And then last but not least is a Dan Bramley tuner. I've tried all three in that order and I've learned quite a bit from them. Just to be clear, they all do exactly what they're supposed to do. There is no question that they change group size and group shape at 100 yards when I'm doing testing. But that's not why I don't use them. It's not that they don't work. It's that they work in ways that I don't want. Let's hit the three big reasons from least important to most important that I don't use tuners anymore on my new barrels. Number three is cost. You know, each and every one of these tuners cost a bit of coin to purchase. They are a very unique precision machined chunk of metal. And that costs money, real money. After you buy the tuner, now you have to get the barrel cut for the tuner. And when you're chambering a new barrel, your gunsmith would be happy to do it for you for a price. The cheapest I've ever seen is $50. And this is a very delicate machining operation. So it might be quite a bit more depending on who your gunsmith is. And quality is important in that particular operation. They have to get it absolutely right. The third part of cost is the cost of ammunition. I'm sorry to tell you, no matter how many times you ask, the answer is always the same. You still have to do full load development if you're using a tuner. That means both powder charge and seating depth. You can't skip either one. You can't do a shortcut of trying to find the lowest ES and SD. If you think you can, you should go watch that video because it's a fairy tale. You can't, with a sample size that you would want to use, ascertain anything of value. The same is true for your seating depth. You aren't going to be able to cheat that one either because the tuner and the seating depth do not do exactly the same thing. So you're going to have to forget about that wild idea as well. Now that you've expended all the ammunition to do powder and seating depth, you get to expend yet more ammunition to do tuner testing. Because the tuner and its reaction is something that is important to map. You have to understand how the tuner works, which direction you need to turn it under certain circumstances, and, yeah, how much to move it. Also, you have to find the nulls and the repeat points on the tuner. Now, if you did your load development properly and you're still shooting under the conditions that you started under, you get to shoot warmed and cooled ammunition to do this to figure out how to tune those two conditions back in. If you're so fortunate as to have a climate where the temperature actually changes from day to day and from time of day to time of day, you could probably do that just going outside. But for me in the Pacific Northwest, where the low is 47 and the high is 55 during six months of the year, that's not really a very useful situation. You're going to have to take a heater to the range and you're going to have to take ice packs to the range to change your ammunition temperature. And then you're going to have to test wisely while you're doing it, all while shooting groups at 100 yards and wasting ammunition components at an astounding rate. I hate to tell you this, but it's not a one-time deal. Now, for the Cortina tuner, for instance, I have three identical barrels that shoot the same cartridge with the same powder with the same bullet, and I can learn something on one and use it on the other. But if you change barrel length, barrel profile, bore diameter of the barrel, powder, which powder you're using, or cartridge, you're going to have to redo your tuner testing. So you're going to expend a lot of ammunition over time getting your tuner figured out. And that's just the cost portion of things. Let's get to number two on our list, which is risk. So the first risk I want to talk about, and I'm not picking on Mike's tuner. I just picked it up off the bench. It's one of three over there. The first risk to consider is opening up the bore right at the muzzle while machining for the tuner. Now, this is a matter of machining technique on the part of your gunsmith. If you have a really good gunsmith, you don't have a whole lot to worry about, but accidents do happen. And if it does happen, you're going to have a barrel that shoots rather poorly. And if your gunsmith doesn't check the bore diameter before and after, you might end up with a barrel that doesn't shoot well and you don't know what's wrong. And you probably don't have the gauge pins to check it yourself. The problem is fixing it. By the time the gunsmith has done 
the tuner install, they've already done the chambering as well, so you are already at your length. In order to fix this, the only option is to shorten the barrel by the length of the entire tenon of the tuner, which means you're gonna end up with a short barrel. Now you could wait for another barrel blank if you so choose and try to sell what you got left or sell it to the gunsmith or whatever you wanna do for a financial compensation package, that's up to you and your gunsmith. If you don't have another barrel blank right on hand yourself, the likelihood of finding one is extremely low right now and you may wait over a year to get another one, which would take you out of competition in a real hurry, either forcing you to shoot an old worn out barrel or leaving you without a rifle to shoot at all. Now, the second risk factor to consider is the tuner itself. You know, we don't touch this end of the barrel a whole lot. We don't carry the rifle around by this end. We typically carry it by the middle. If this gets turned even slightly in your gun case due to friction, rubbing up against stuff, whatever, because you didn't have the set screws tight enough, well, you just got a rifle that doesn't shoot very well. It doesn't take a lot of turn on any of these tuners to throw the rifle pretty badly out of tune. And that is the real risk that I see that is most important to me. You have to watch that tuner setting all the time. You have to check it when you lay the rifle down each and every time. Make sure that the marks are lined up exactly where you had them so you don't have a bad outcome. And worse yet, because they're multiple threads, you can be off by a full turn. And that would make for a bad day. Probably ruin your match and maybe the match after it before you figured it out. So I don't much care for these risks in my shooting because when I go to a match, I'm there to win, not to try to figure out what happened to my rifle. And the number one most important part for me as to why I don't put tuners on anymore is the psychology associated with having a tuner. Yeah, you heard me, psychology. It's time to analyze your head a little bit. What happens to a shooter that has a tuner on the barrel? Well, there's two big things. Let's start with the lesser of the two evils here. That shooter, when they lay down to shoot, they're gonna fire a few shots and try to decide if the rifle is in tune or not. And then they are going to try to shoot a couple of shots, turn the tuner, a few more shots, turn the tuner, maybe it's three, maybe it's two, maybe it's five, I don't care, to try to get the best tune possible before they go for record. And that's only if they have unlimited ciders. When they have limited ciders, they get pretty nervous. They get edgy. Let's think about that process in the context of what we've learned before. Can a five shot group tell you how well your rifle does or doesn't shoot in reality? Well, no, it can't. I mean, it's not statistically significant. We've discussed that at length. Can a three shot burst tell you even as much as a five shot burst does? Of course not. And a lot of people are only shooting two shots and turning the tuner again. Well, that's a recipe for disaster. I mean, guys, seriously, I can take a load that is tuned well enough to shoot a 20 inch group at a thousand yards, you know, the size of the entire nine ring and fire two consecutive shots and have them land right on top of each other and think, aha, I've got it. And no, I don't. I just got the worst tune of my life. I go for record and guess what? I get a bad outcome. In addition to that, if I shoot a few turn, a few more turn, a few more turn, I eventually get that barrel so hot that it's not going to shoot well, no matter what I did with the tuner. So the risk is taking yourself further out of tune, thinking that you got a better tune while doing this process. It doesn't work. What you've been told on YouTube is a fairy tale. I'm just gonna be really honest here. It doesn't work. It never has worked. And the few times that you see someone have success doing it, there is a pile of failures behind it where they did the exact same process and got a bad outcome. They just don't show you that on YouTube. The other part of this is the really big part for me. Like I said before, I go to matches to win them, not to tune my rifles. You can only do one thing at a time while you're shooting. You can either be fully present, active, competing, watching that wind completely in touch with the airflow, or you can be trying to assess your tune. You can't do both. It doesn't happen. They don't both work at the same time. Now, if you stop, and you start looking at your group in total and say, oh, that's pretty big, you might be able to make a slight adjustment and keep going, but that isn't ideal. You don't want to be assessing tune while you're shooting. There's two problems in this that I need to kind of point out. The first is lack of confidence. If you are evaluating your tune, you have no confidence in your rifle, and as such, you're going to shoot that way, and that's going to defeat you every single time. The second thing is, if you're sitting around messing with a tuner, you definitely aren't paying attention to the wind and you are going to get eaten alive by the conditions. 
much less you're going to lose opportunities to shoot in ideal conditions during the early part of your relay while you're sitting there fooling with that tuner. You know, sometimes we shoot a strategy where we shoot a few shots into an ideal condition, stop and wait for that ideal condition to come back again. If that thing only comes back 12 times during a relay and you give up three of them because you're messing with a tuner, you aren't going to get all 20 shots in the target under ideal conditions, and you're going to have to sacrifice something to get there. If that's an X or a point that costs you a match, well, you're going to be licking your wounds for a while. In all, we have three problems with tuners that cause me not to mount them on F open rifles anymore. And the same would apply to an FTR rifle for me. And those are cost, risk, and the psychology or the psychological impact of having that tuner and needing to think that you need to tune the rifle all the time. Because in the end, if you can do load development, powder load development and seating depth load development in a complete and thorough way, the same way you would have to if you had a tuner in order to win, then you can adjust for conditions with either your powder charge or seating depth is necessary. Because only two things really affect your tune when you go from place to place shooting these matches. The first is temperature. And that's predictable because we all carry a pocket computer that will give us a forecast on demand. And even when that forecast is wrong, I've done a prior video that taught you how to deal with those problems by either heating or cooling your ammunition. The second one is humidity, and that's really simple to correct. You simply store your ammunition in a humidity controlled environment, which takes a Bovita bag. It's not hard. There's really no reason, absolutely no reason, to have a tuner in my mind. That's just my opinion, how I do work, and it's an opinion that is shared by several national champions that still to this day have abandoned tuners as well. I'm not the only one. Leave me a comment. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know. Until next time, shoot straight. Really consider the impacts of your decisions for equipment, and I'll see you in the next video.